In this video, we'll see how to use PuTTY and SSH keys to access a Linux server in the cloud without needing passwords. The Linux server I'll be connecting to is provided by SystemOnGrid.com. They provide virtual Linux servers in the cloud, and for their entry-level device, the first year is free. And so we're thankful for their support in our class. Here's where you can go to set up that server. So here's where we are so far. We've got a machine running on our desktop that is connected to a virtual Linux server in the cloud. We've been able to connect uh, using PuTTY to our instance of that server in the cloud. Uh, but to do that so far, we've used a username and a password to authenticate. So what we'd like to do now is we would like to set up a system that will allow us to authenticate without using passwords. To do that, we're going to run SSH keygen here on the server, and that will produce both a public key and a private key. We will then have to get the private key down to our workstation somehow, and then we'll feed that private key into a program called PuttyGen that gets installed with Putty, and we will that will produce then what's called a Putty private key. Once we've informed our PuTTY client to use that private key when we authenticate, it should be able to use the public key that's on that server and authenticate, authenticate without needing passwords. I'm going to go ahead and open a Windows command prompt, and I'll use that to launch PuTTY as well as to execute some other commands. So I'll just type in CMD and press OK. So I'll launch PuTTY from here. I will select my previously saved configuration, load that up, and press open. I'll supply my password, and we should be logged in. Now recall that when we log in, we will be in the home directory of the authenticated user. So present working directory shows me that we are at the Ubuntu folder, which is where we want to be to be able to generate this key pair. And to do that, we'll use SSH keygen. I'm going to tell it the type I want, and that's RSA. Wants to know where you want to save it. Now it's going to create a folder called .ssh, and that's where we want to be. And it will put the private key into this file called id underscore RSA. Now it's asking me for a passphrase to encrypt the file. Uh, it would be more secure that way. I'm going to skip the passphrase just for ease of use. And so now it's successfully generated that, that, that pair of files. So I should be able to now change directories to .ssh and do a listing ls-al. And we can see here are the two files that, was, that were created private key and the public key. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that public key right here. So I will use cat id rsa.pub and that's what the public key looks like. And so just because the public key has been generated on this machine doesn't yet quite make it ready to be able to use for authentication. I've got to put that into the right place. And the right place is a file called authorized keys right here in the .ssh folder. So I'm here in the SSH folder, and I am now going to concatenate this public key onto the end of that authorized key folder. Now, you'll notice when we did the directory here, the listing, there is no authorized keys file. And so we could just rename this file as the authorized keys file, and that would be fine. But typically, when we already have an authorized keys file, we want to just add a new one onto the end. We want to concatenate it onto the end. And cat will allow us to do that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and cat the file, just display the file out. But instead of putting it to the console, I'm going to send it to the file that I want it to go to, and that's authorized keys. Authorized ke underscore keys. And so now if we do a listing, we should see that we have an authorized keys file. And if we take a look at that authorized keys file, it'll be the same thing as what we had in the IDRSA uh, public file. So let's just cat authorized files. 
so we can see it's the same thing. And so that now is ready. We're now set up to be able to use the private key that goes with this public key to be able to authenticate without using a password. So I've got to get that private key off the server down onto my local machine. Fortunately, there's a program that comes with PuTTY called PSCP that will allow me to do just that. PSCP stands for PuTTY Secure Copy. And so I'm copying from a location to a location. So the from is going to be the server. So I specify that in this way. I say the name of the user at the IP address Then I put a colon and I put the path to the file that I'm interested in. So that would be forward slash you uh, forward slash home forward slash Ubuntu forward slash dot SSH forward slash ID underscore RSA. That is the private key file. Space, now I'm ready to specify the destination and I'm already here in users gov, which is where I wanted to end up, but I'll go ahead and specify the full path here as well, just so it, it's clear that I've got a, a source file and a destination file. So C colon backslash users backslash gov. And so that should prompt me for the password and then copy that file to this location. It's the password. And it's copied that file here. So now if I do a dir of id underscore rsa, we see that that file is here on my local file system, and it's got you know, just about a megabyte, just about a K, I should say, 1,679 uh, characters. So the file's here, but it's not in the right format for PuTTY to use. So I've got to convert it to a PuTTY private key file. Again, PuTTY installs with a program that will do this for me. It's called PuTTY Gen. So, PuTTY Gen. All right, so here's the key generator. Actually, I can use PuTTY Gen to create a private key, public key pair. Uh, if, in fact, if I did that, I would need to be able to get the public key up to the server and get it configured correctly. So we can go either direction here. But here, I'm just going to convert the private key that I've downloaded from the server. So on conversions, I'll choose import key. It'll ask me where that key file is. And we called it IDRSA. Here it is. Here's the file. I'm just going to say save private key. You sure you want to save it without a passphrase? Yep, that's fine. And I'll save it right here in the same place. I'm going to call this Ubuntu private key. And it'll be a .ppk, a putty private key file. Uh, and that's it. That file should be there now. And so now if I do a dir for star .ppk, then we can see here's that Ubuntu private key file and so that's what we're after. And this is the file now that we can use with PuTTY to be able to log in without having to put the password in. Whew. Let's go ahead and configure PuTTY so I can do that. Open up PuTTY again. And select my already configured file. I'll load that up. So now I have to tell this configuration to use that private key file. So to do that, I'll come over here to SSH, and then I'll select the Auth option, and right here is the private key that we're going to use for authentication. So I will browse and find that private key. I'll make sure that I go back and save this session so that the next time I open it, I'll be ready to, it'll maintain the location of that private key. And then I'll go ahead and, and open. And you can see that that logged me in without needing to supply a password. So right here, username, password, authenticating with public key. And then here's the public key that it used. 
and it came right through without needing to provide a password. So that's it. Now, whenever I use that profile opening PuTTY, it will connect directly without needing to supply any password.